Welcome to section two of our three-part series of the Severe Weather Education Training Modules. My name is Jim Stefkovich and I'm the meteorologist in charge. In this section we will talk about the severe weather warning process and the different aspects of the warning polygon and what that means to you. It is important to know the difference between a forecast tornado warning and a warning with a confirmed tornado. A confirmed tornado is a violent, dangerous, rotating column of air that is in contact with the ground as explained in section one. In the case where we have a confirmed tornado, we have an eyewitness reporting it. This, of course, is an imminent threat to people and property. Many times we have a situation where there is no one available to see the tornado, is not in a position to report it, or the tornado has not yet formed. In these cases, the warning forecaster determines whether or not to issue a warning based on the following. The environment supporting tornadic development. By environment, as Jim explained in section one, we know from our knowledge of the atmosphere and the balance between instability and shear whether or not severe weather is possible with the storm. If the storm structure has tornadic characteristics. Again, as explained in section one, we know the type of storm we are looking at based on radar and its potential to produce severe weather. Finally, we look to see if the storm has a history of producing tornadoes and if there are any current reports of a tornado. Remember, a forecast warning or warning where a confirmed tornado is not occurring is based on the warning forecaster's knowledge of the environment, structure of the storm, and his or her ultimate decision that the storm has a relatively high potential to produce a tornado. But as section one describes, our current level of scientific knowledge and the characteristics of the storms themselves means that severe weather will not always occur with every warning. When a forecaster issues a warning, he or she issues what is known as a storm-based or polygon warning. In October 2007, the National Weather Service stopped issuing county-based warnings, which is shown in the picture on the left, in favor of the polygon warnings, which is on the right side. The advantage of this is to alert only the people affected by the storm versus alerting an entire county population, regardless of whether or not the storm would be in their area. These images show the advantage of knowing the specific threat area instead of being restricted by geopolitical boundaries. Two of the main products used by National Weather Service warning forecasters are radar reflectivity shown on the left, which depicts two supercell tornadoes, one clearly defined by a hook echo. The picture on the right is velocity or motions within storms. The green colors are motions toward the radar and red colors are motions away from the radar. You can see the bright greens and reds together indicating a very strong and tight circulation. However, as described in section one, Doppler radar does not detect actual tornadoes, but circulations that are either associated with tornadoes or could eventually become tornadoes. In some instances, the speed and track of individual storms may cause the need for overlapping polygons. Here we have a couple of supercells moving rapidly to the east-northeast and will basically be moving over or very near the same areas in a short period of time. In a situation like this, the warning forecaster determines, due to the movement of the storms, it is better to have overlapping warning polygons in place rather than trying to create smaller non-overlapping polygon warnings. This image is of the storm reflectivity and how the warning polygons might look. Notice the towns and cities within or near these polygons. If you were within these areas, you would want to take immediate action to protect yourself from these dangerous storms. But more importantly, note the areas not in the warning. Note that parts of southern Tuscaloosa County are in the warning, but the city of Tuscaloosa is not. Same for Jefferson County. The city of Hoover is in the warning, but downtown Birmingham is not. Finally, in Shelby County, Alabaster is in the warning, but Calera, as well as eastern Shelby County, is not. The next case we look at an actual event that occurred on April 19, 2009. The storm originates over southern Montgomery County and immediately begins to show storm characteristics supportive of producing a tornado. With the environment also supportive of tornadic development, the warning forecaster issues a tornado warning for the storm, then issues updates to the warning both to update the current position of the storm as well as clear areas that are no longer a threat. As the storm continues to track towards the northeast, it will undergo several periods of reorganization and we will issue a new warning as well as updates. 
Let's watch the storm for a couple more frames as it moves through northern Russell County. This storm eventually produced a strong four mile long tornado in eastern Russell County near Phoenix City, Alabama and moved into Columbus, Georgia. The velocity image shows multiple rotation couplets trying to organize of which any are a sign of a tornado about to develop. In this situation, even though there are no early reports of a tornado, keeping an active tornado warning in place during the life of this supercell is the best method to make the public aware of the immediate threat of this storm. This event is a classic case where warnings were absolutely necessary between Phoenix City and southern Montgomery County, but the storm didn't actually produce a tornado until it was almost at the Georgia state line. Next, we look at a very well-organized supercell that is moving quickly towards the cities of Selma and Montgomery. Notice the very well-defined hook with this storm. The warning forecaster will immediately see a significant tornado and hail threat with the storm, and everyone in the Selma area should be concerned with the storm. The forecaster then continues to issue warnings as well as clear areas no longer affected. The radar velocity product confirms what we saw in a previous slide. This is a very intense and significant looking storm with strong rotation that could have produced a tornado at any time. However, unfortunately, no tornado ever occurred, but there was a large swath of 60 to 70 mile an hour straight line winds, as well as hail up to the size of baseballs. Even though no tornado developed, we can easily see the reason for issuing several polygon warnings. Can you spot the developing tornado in this slide? This broken line of thunderstorms is an example of how reflectivity products may not always give the best information to the warning forecaster. As we issue the warning polygon, individuals near Millport and Vernon should be taking cover. The storm relative velocity shows a much clearer picture of circulation within the storm as outlined by the bright red and green couplet in the polygon. These type of events in the southeast United States produce quick spin-up type tornadoes that typically are smaller and on the ground for less periods of time than supercell tornadoes. These supercell type events require a lot of concentration by the warning forecaster as they tend to rapidly generate within the line of storms. Almost 40% of our tornadoes over the past several years come from non-supercells, so the public must be quick to react with these warnings. This concludes Section 2 of our three-part series of the Severe Weather Education Training Module. We hope you have enjoyed it and found it useful. Issuing warnings for severe weather, and especially tornadoes, is a detailed process, but hopefully this module gives some insight to the reasoning behind the warnings and explains why every warning may not have actual severe weather. It is important for everyone to understand the role of polygon warnings and why they may be issued for your safety. Thank you for joining us. The next section will explain how warnings are disseminated to you and our partners.